very warm welcome uh, professor evgeny griva uh, from financial university uh, under the russian federation and uh, also very warm welcome to the his excellency the dr sergey uh, fandiv about that so before we start uh, i would like to introduce the today's uh, uh, guest uh, speaker today so let me start with the his excellency dr sergey uh, fandiv and uh, he is uh, graduated uh, from people's friendship university moscow and he has the phd degree in economics and he has worked in many foreign countries as a, uh, on different assignment and from 9, 2019 he has been appointed as a deputy to head of the representation of the russian government uh, in india uh, as a vice counsel and he is also with the uh, indo russian uh, uh, science center in mumbai and the second speaker of, of the today is uh, professor evgeny griva and uh, very warm welcome today uh, virtually in mumbai and uh, he is the head of the department of innovative management international business school of business financial university under the government of russian federation and which is as the dr uh, uh, sandeep also was mentioning about his pretty uh, highly prestigious university one of the top five top five in the uh, russia Uh, he was former ceo uh, of uh, woc sibur of petrochemical india a uh, subsidiary of biggest uh, russian petrochemical company in india from 2012 to 2016 so he has wonderful experience of the uh, uh, india is concerned probably will uh, learning from his experience and uh, this project was a partner of the reliance industry for the construction on plant for uh, butyl rubber production and he is uh, was also he was also of uh, chief of the economic section and the press secretary of russian embassy in pakistan uh, from 91 to 2001 and he was al- also the hrd and a member of the board of well known biggest russian companies uh, uh, also like part of the sibur and the police and international company linde gas in russia for more than 20 years of experience uh he was also consultant for american oil service company uh with ford uh, uh, in russia and the russian canadian agro holding food park food park he holds the phd degree and mba is specialized uh, in hr organizational development international business cross culture management and also we are we are uh, honored to have our der- own director dr monika khanna so let me also brief introduce uh, to about her to uh, so the both speaker can also uh, know about her so she is the director of the kg somaya institute of management also the dean faculty of management studies somaya vidyavya university she is the uh, professor of the marketing management and chairperson of C- center for consumer and market studies in emerging economies uh, she has uh, more than 23 years experience in the area of the marketing and uh, the strategic brand management marketing research service uh, marketing she has taught in various uh, reputed institution in india and abroad and uh, she has been a visiting a faculty uh, for the uh, in russia st petersburg uh, polytechnic university and uh, she has been also visiting faculty for to the dsbw university in the germany stuttgart over there and uh, uh, it has been a uh, very great progress under her, her leadership uh, uh, the kg somaya institute of management and uh, she will uh, introduce about institute later on and uh, she is a phd guide also and uh, uh, basically she come from the uh, industry uh, like uh, engineering background she worked in the siemens limited at mumbai so it's again very warm welcome to all of you for today's uh, uh webinar and interactive uh, session about that and between the uh, uh, indo and uh, russia that experience will be uh, the speaker will be sharing and will will be also discussing about what are the potential uh, scopes are there bilaterally about that and uh, we heard about that uh, like you know the financial university in the under uh, uh russian federation is one of the highly reputed and one of the point which i read about that this has uh, produced many billionaires actually 
one of the university which has produced many billionaires about that and couple of the ministers also so we are uh, privileged and very honored to have you sir over here and uh, over to you student and please invite uh, dr munka ma'am for opening remarks please so thank you sir for introducing the eminent guest so as sir has already told that we are we are here have a very honorable guest dr monica khanna director of kg sumaya institute of management so thank you ma'am for gracing us with your presence now we'd like to request you to give us some opening remarks over to you ma'am uh thank you very much uh, and uh, good evening to all of you this is good evening and namaste from uh, mumbai i would like to welcome uh, dr sergey fandiv and professor griva from the financial university of russia moscow uh, i would like to introduce our university uh, very briefly uh, we are the kj somaya institute of management we are a management school and now we are under the somaya vidyavihar university which was formed uh, just last year in august uh, 2019 prior to that uh, we have started the management school started in the year 1981 and has been over the years conducting the university of mumbai programs and the autonomous programs but since last year now we are conducting the programs under the somaya vidyavihar university as a business school we have been consistently ranked between 20 to 25 in the all india rankings and as far as the private business schools are concerned we are in the top 10 private schools and this has come up again and again in the various business school rankings which are conducted by uh, various uh, ranking bodies we conduct a, a number of uh, post graduate and doctoral programs so we have the doctoral studies in management then we run mba program that's a two year full time mba program and apart from that the institute has evolved over the last 40 years and it offers sector specific mba programs so i'm happy to inform you that we conduct two year mba program in international business in two year program in retail management in financial services integrated marketing communication in healthcare management in human resources and we just launched the sports management program also we also have an executive mba we have part time mba programs and we have the master of computer applications i'm very happy to inform you that we are one of the very few business schools in the country which offer such a bouquet of uh, sector specific mba programs our focus is to become a, a research focused institute right now over the years we evolved as a career focused institute but right now uh, our main focus is to become a not only a career focus but also a research focused institute we have 89 faculty members and we have a full fledged uh, department which offers placements and we also do we have an mdp department which does reskilling for the industry professionals now we have uh, we are going in for the us based quality certification that is the aacsb and we are almost in the final stages and hopefully by september 2021 we should be able to get the uh, us uh, based quality certification right now there are only 14 management schools in india which have the aacsb certification we also have seven uh, centers of excellence for promoting uh, research activities in our institute we have a huge library with 95000 books and we have many uh, e databases which help the faculty and the students to do research and to do their masters thesis uh, we have a very good internationalization program and right now around 30 uh, uh, universities we have tied up with around 30 st- universities including one university from russia that is the uh, peter the great uh, uh, university from st petersburg and uh, they in fact uh, the st petersburg university they conducted this uh, conference online that is the global challenges of digital transformation and uh, many of our faculty we took part and we also presented papers and uh, some of the faculty along with the st petersburg faculty have also applied for some funded research projects and the you know the research outcome the fu- outcomes are to be uh, to be known to us uh, shortly maybe and uh, we have been doing a lot of reskilling for the industry and we have very marquee clients uh, which are uh, you know which are being trained by our faculty we have done a lot of work as far as the uh, technology uh, investment in pedagogy is concerned and we have a bloomberg lab we have a media analytics lab and uh, over the years 40 years we have around 10000 plus alumni all over the uh, world and uh, as an institution we are able to provide jobs 
to all our uh, students passing out graduates and the average salary is indian rupees more than uh, 10 lakhs with the highest salary being almost close to uh, 29 lakhs so right now uh, you know we are looking for opportunities for expanding our uh, collaboration and uh, we are very happy if there can be some collaboration with the financial university in russia and we have uh, eight areas of specialization in the institute so we have marketing and international business we have finance and law we have hr we have uh, supply operations and supply chain we have the department of data science analytics economics and so on and general management that includes entrepreneurship business communication and strategy so we have a full range of programs and a full range of areas of specialization and uh, we are very keen to uh, have some sort of tie up with you and i hope that this would be a very good platform where you know we can understand each other and develop some sort of uh, maybe uh, some uh, uh, a small relationship with each other that would be really beneficial to both the institutions so welcome once again and thank you very much for taking out your time and uh, being with us and addressing our students thank you so much and welcome once again thank you thank you so much ma'am for this wonderful commencement of the session now i would request dr sarji fandev to shower us with his invaluable words over to you sir okay thank you thank you thank you namaste dear friends <laughs> I think we have to say namaste <laughs> first of all i would like to thank uh, dr satyendra kumar uh miss monica kana professor monica kana and all of you dr pankaj and all of you my dear dr nila kantan nila kantan is correct <laughs> yes <laughs> to invite me to this very interesting event i know that somaya university is a very famous very respected and very well known university not only in mumbai and maharashtra state but in west india and all over the india My name is Dr. Sergey Fondiev. I am a Vice Consul of Russian Federation in Mumbai for Science, Culture and Education. In the same time, I am running the Russian Center for Science and Culture in Mumbai, Peder Road. Our cultural center was established in 1975 and now we are celebrating its 45th anniversary. That's why I will speak to you about the topic growth points of Russia-India business relations. through the prism of my work first of all i would like to tell you in brief about the relationship between russia and india our countries are good big and long term friendly countries the first russian man that had come to indian west coast alibak was the russian merchant and traveler afanasy nikitin it was 550 years ago in 1469 even 30 years before vasco da gama stepped in the almost same indian shore but there wasn't uh, there wasn't a relationship between russia and india you know because india was uh, england territory you know that's why uh, the first uh, the real and very productive relationship between our two countries started only in 1947 after independence The first Indian embassy, first Indian embassy has been established in Moscow, the capital of Russia in April 1947, April. Even you know before 15 August, the Indian Independence Day. At this time, the agreement of mutual cooperation between Russia and India was signed. The erstwhile Soviet Union contributed to India very much to build its economy and industry. For example, maybe not all of you know that iit bombay was constructed by russian uh, engineers in 1958 uh, you know oil uh, as well as oil research institutes in ahmedabad and dehradun the russian geologists helped the indian find uh, find out the oil fields the metallurgical plants in bilai and bokaro many water coal and gas electrical station transport telecommunication <clears throat> agriculture and medicine enterprises were built with a huge assistance of russian people <clears throat> many indian students were studying in soviet russia before um, at, at this time and became very professional engineers and doctors 
builders and scientists. There was a big cooperation in space program. You know, the first Indian satellite was launched with the Russian rocket in 1975. And the first Indian astronaut, cosmonaut, Rakesh Sharma, with the Russian Soyuz T-11 in 1984. Even now, four Indian cosmonauts are training in the space center near Moscow, preparing to the flight with an Indian space rocket in 2022. Unfortunately, after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 and the political changes in India, the collaboration between our two countries became less. Despite the decreasing, the cooperation in business and field remained in business field remained, remained very, very significant, and especially in the military domain. The unique, famous, and hypersonic rocket Brahmos. The name uh, derives from Brahma and Moscow, that's why Brahmos, uh, is the result of tight mutual work of Russian and Indian engineers. The joint, the joint venture plant producing the Kalashnikov assault rifle in Korva, joint venture in Goa shipyard for building the Corvettes and the submarines, submarines in Mazagon, Mumbai for Indian Navy. The famous air jet carrier, the flagman of Indian Navy, Vikramidia, super, uh, it's from Russia, you know, Russian uh, help, Russian uh, engineers helped Indians. Super sophisticated, sophisticated tanks T-19, the air fighters MiG and Sukhoi in Nasik. All this became possible with the permanent help and strong assistance in technologies of a big friend of India, the Russian Federation and the Russian people. Uh, what about atomic station in Kudam Kulam? You know, this is all, uh, also uh, Russian engineers uh, helped to construct this uh, nuclear power station. So uh, the new agreement of strategic partnership was signed in the uh, year 2000 and the agreement of special privileged partnership between India and Russia in the year 2010. Apart the weaponry, uh, there are big Russian investments in Indian economy, about 18 billion US dollars in the vehicle plant, for example, Kamas Vectra Motors in Hosur, the two oil treatment plant in Gujarat, in atomic energy field, I told you, you're all very well known. There is huge cooperation between Russia and India in this regard. And that in 2013, the first stage of Indian nuclear power station constructed by Russia was set into operation in Kudam Kulam, as, as I said you, Tamil Nadu state. There is as well a big cooperation in IT technologies in Bengaluru. The Indian investment in Russia, less of course, are about 3 billion US dollars and six times less than the Russian ones. Most of them are invested in oil production in Sakhalin, Russian Far East. India buys in Russia not only weaponry, but the fertilizers for agriculture, diamonds, electrical machinery, vessels and ships, airplanes and medicine raw materials. Russia buy in, buys in India the agricultural production, textile and common consumption goods. Of course, we need to admit that the foreign trade turnover between Russia and India is now very, is not very big, mostly about one, only 1% 1 in the whole foreign trade turnover of both countries. It's very small, very small. It must be increased. Holding that fact, the leaders of both our countries, President Vladimir Putin and Premier Minister Narendra Modi, who have always had good re private relationships between each other, instructed the officials to intensify the trade relations between Russia and India. As to my job, which consists in establishing the good, stable, and friendly humanitarian, cultural, scientific, scientific and educational relations, relationship between common people, Russian and Indian people, I'd like to tell you that we are organizing in our cultural center many interesting events, photo exhibitions, screening of Russian films, lectures, roundtables for discussing interesting topics and issues. We are establishing the good relationship and cooperation between the Russian and Indian university and colleges, Russian and Indian filmmakers, museums, research institutes, uh, institutes and organizing Russian and Indian dancers and song cultural exchange programs. We have in our center is uh, the Russian language department and are helping the Russian language department in the Mumbai, Pune, Kolhapur, Ujjain, Vadodara universities as well. 
As per my vision, the growth point in two-sided business relationship between Russia and India have to be significantly improved nowadays, especially in investments in high technology production, IT technologies, mechanical engineering, in energy power supply facilities, high level quality military production, and of course, in the developing of bilateral mutually beneficial trade. I think my dear colleagues and my dear respected students, uh, my estimated friend, Professor Evgeny Griva uh, from Financial uh, University of Moscow and Russia will tell you more about this topic because he was working many years as a chief of a different business project in India and other countries all over the world. As to me, I invite you all to visit our center at Peder Road or to watch online the Russian films about our country and our Russian multinational people dubbed in, dubbed in English. You know, the Russians and the Indians are very similar. We are very, very similar, my dear. Our nations are, first of all, multinational, multi-religious and multilingual and multicultural. We have not only the same customs. For example, you are burning, you Indian, you are burning the Holika when the Indian spring comes. And we, the Russian, we are as well burning Holika when the Russian spring comes, but only its name not Holika, a Maslnica, you know, but same custom, same. We have the same similar words in Sanskrit and in Russian language. For instance, Agni in Sanskrit, in Russian, Agon, Asti, Yest, Kravi, Krov in Russian, you know, Adi, Adin, Dvai, Dva, Tri, Tri, same. So, Grab, Grabit, Mri, Umri, Bratri, Brat, Matri, Mat. Samya, Semya, Diva, Diva, same word. Dada, Dada, Lub, Lubit, Nich, Noch, Samya, Semya. Many, many, many Indian girls have the name Shweta. You know Shweta. Many Shweta I met in India. But in Russia, many Sveta. There is same word, Sveta. <laughs> you know. I will tell you, my dear friends, that in Russia, there is river, which name is Kama. You know Kama, your uh, DS. Kama. You, uh, we have name uh, of river Kama and name of the people living along the ri this ri river is Moksha, you know, Moksha. And all this is the thousands and thousands of kilometers from India. The symbol of Mysore King Kraja Karnataka is a two-headed two uh, eagle, which is a symbol of Russia. Tell me, please, how it's possible? Very interesting. Maybe in the distant, very distant past, many in many thousands of years ago, we were the same people and our ancestors were as same as well. So after living and working in India about two years, I can firmly say, you the Indians and we the Russians, we have not only the similar customs and words, we had the similar soul. That is why we like Indian films, dances, songs, all Indian culture and its very famous and rich history. And I saw a big interest of many Indian friends to know more about our Russian culture, our Russian history. Dear students and dear respected professors, let's be frank, please. Come to our center, watch and enjoy our films, photo exhibitions, and you will understand and love Russia and Russian people as Russian people love and understand friendly India and lovely Indian people. Jai Rusi Hindi Dosti. Rusi Hindi, bye bye. Thank you very much for your attention. Very good. Thank you so Dosti. much, sir. Thank you so much. Like, first of all, I would say, like, we would love to be friends with you. And thank you for your insightful words and like you uh, telling us about this rich history of India and Russia relationships and how similar India and Russians are, mm -hmm. our customs, our cultures, even the language similarities also. It was all these interesting facts about India and Russia relationships. It was indeed very informative. So now I would like to request Professor NGV Griva to enlighten us about the growth points in two-sided business rela relationship of Russia and India. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, respected Dr. Satyendra Kumar, Ms. Monika Khanna, uh, Dr. Sergei Pandeyev, and uh, dear colleagues, 
Thank you very much for invitation. Of course, for me, it's an honor to participate and to deliver a lecture uh, because uh, India, Asia is my love. Uh, I started uh, working as a diplomat uh, uh, in previous century. Uh, I um, worked uh, in Pakistan as a diplomat and after that, within uh, many years, uh, it was my intention to return back. And in 2012, I continued as a businessman, as uh, uh, Mr. Sergei told, uh, uh, responsible for very, very important project. Uh, yes, it was a bilateral um, project uh, between Sibur and Reliance. So totally, I spent uh, in uh, India and Pakistan more than uh, six years. Uh, and, uh, and now I am trying to keep on pulse uh, uh, Russian-Indian trade and economic relationship, uh, all the projects. Uh, uh, just yesterday, I participated uh, as a moderator in uh, uh, Euro-Asian Commission. Uh, it's an alliance of... Uh, uh, former Soviet Union countries, how to promote our goods, how to speed up our uh, trade and economic relationship with uh, uh, India and uh, about negotiation over free trade zone between uh, former Soviet Union countries and uh, India. So again, thank you very much. And I hope it will be a, uh, I am happy to be in Samaya Vidyavar Bihar University, and I hope uh, it's only a first step towards our uh, bilateral uh, cooperation and the support of uh, Russian Culture uh, Center. Uh, so, before some words about uh, Russian-Indian relationship, I would like to introduce uh, briefly uh, uh, financial university. Because uh, financial university, um, it's uh, one of the most influential uh, one in uh, Russia. Uh, first of all, it has... Uh, uh, very unique history. It was founded in 1919. So uh, it means uh, previous year we celebrated 100th anniversary, uh, anniversary of <clears throat> our uh, university. It uh, uh, named the Moscow Finance Economical Institute. And the aim to form up this uh, university, that time institute, was to start teaching, to start preparing management for new uh, Russia, for new Russia after October Revolution, when uh, uh, elite, previous elite practically left the country and the new Russian government, Soviet government faced the situation uh, with a gap of management, absolutely. Uh, absolutely no uh, professional managers. So it was a decision to create the university responsible for such teaching. <clears throat> what we have now. Uh, financial university belongs to elite club of Russian universities. Only five of them accredited by government of Russian Federation. Uh, including uh, St. Petersburg University as well, which we already uh, cooperated. Uh, and uh, what, do, uh, what else? There are a lot of uh, famous graduates in our university. For example, acting finance minister of uh, Russia, Mr. Anton Silvanov, is our graduate. Uh, former prime minister of Russia, Mr. Pavlov, chairman, previous also former uh, chairman of State Bank of Russia, Mr. Gerashenko. And I can continue this range. Uh, many, many political elites of our country 
or belongs to financial university. Uh, we have 27 branches all over the country, uh, 58 cathedras in our uh, university. Uh, number of students is approximately about 46,000. Uh, as for uh, directions of activity, we have uh, 13 uh, baccalaureus uh, directions, 14 magisters programs, uh, 72 vocational retrainings programs, including in Russia, MBA belongs to vocational retraining, despite difference in hours. Uh, I know that in uh, most English speaking countries, MBA belongs to higher education, but there is a small difference. Uh, but nevertheless, 72 uh, specialization in vocational retraining. And uh, we also have full range, uh, executive MBA and uh, uh, a specialization in, uh, uh, first of all, finance, strategic management, uh, also economics, uh, HR, international management, cross-culture management, etc., etc. practically full range. And uh, we are in uh, top ratings of Eastern Europe and Russia among uh, universities. Uh, uh, we have a continuous education system. So we have our own college, which uh, teach uh, school children dream to enter the financial university in future. So we try to create such system and also to promote our graduates to business. And uh, I will say some words about it uh, a little bit later because we are orientee on some international programs. Uh, we teach boss uh, and uh, teach and train boss state officials and top and middle managers uh, for state service and business activity. Um, uh, same specialization in MBA. But uh, we have some new directions like digital economy and uh, some uh, uh, intention to have uh, joint programs with uh, Western and Eastern universities. So that is why it is very important for us due to my Indian record and Indian uh, activity uh, in, the, in the past, uh, it also was my intention, and I asked Mr. Sergei to put us through uh, to start some cooperation in education programs. We uh, really see a great potential for this. Uh, I represent International Business School in Financial University. Uh, oriented, uh, first of all, MBA and vocational retraining. Uh, and we work uh, with acting politicians, uh, state officers, and businessmen. I can say that we launched uh, a month ago a unique program for Russia. And as I know, uh, there are only some such programs in the world, which is oriented not for state officer, but for politicians, professional politicians. Uh, how to be elected in parliament, et cetera, and so how to create your own image. Uh, and uh, this was a great success for us. Um, and uh, uh, we also try to invite uh, our famous consultants uh, because for us, uh, to promote MBA programs, uh, first of all, are very important to attract uh, practitioners. Uh, most of our uh, most of our lectures, most of our professors are at the same uh, time uh, uh, involved uh, in some real business. And besides that, we invite uh, very well-known consultants. For example. Uh, a month ago, uh, 
uh, I personally invited Dr. Adizis, it's Hak Adizis. Uh, I suppose uh, he is one of uh, maybe five or 10 great consultants in the world. And uh, we worked together in Cebu, Russian biggest petrochemical company. And Mr. Adizis uh, delivered a lecture for our students. Uh, no, and uh, uh, finishing uh, this uh, part before lecture, some words about me. Uh, um, as I told, I worked uh, as a diplomat in Pakistan, but rudely I am from Yak Yakutia. This is northeast of Russia, minus 50 degrees below zero. Uh, absolutely a snowy uh, area of Russia. And uh, yes, I worked uh, as a diplomat in Pakistan, as a top manager for uh, some Russian oil and gas, metallurgy, uh, uh, industrial uh, gas, international company, Linde Gas, and, and some more companies. And now uh, uh, I'm trying to use this experience uh, in my activity in the university. So let's start with uh, Indian-Russian relationship. Uh, uh, Dr. Satendra, would it be possible to show my presentation on the screen? On the scene? Yes, I will, I will do that. Can you share it? Yes, yes, I, I will do just a minute. Yeah. Okay. Of course, it would be difficult because Mr. Sergei Pandev, Dr. Sergei, practically briefly uh, said about everything <laughs> in Russian Indian relationship. But maybe I will put some emphasis of uh, some concrete business cooperation. Yes, thank you very much. Will I be able to run the presentation? Once you need to move to the next slide, please let me know. I will move to the next. Okay, great. Thank you. So please, please, next slide. <laughs> Could you, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, Mr. Sergei told about uh, some deeper history of uh, relationship between uh, Russia and India. I will not uh, touch uh, the history. Uh, I suppose uh, milestones of uh, today's real history of uh, relationship, of cooperations, uh, cooperation uh, rooted from uh, these key points, uh, uh, key and core dates. Uh, it's officially or 9th for, of May for Russia, 1945. It's a victory day in Great Patriotic War. And in September, victory day in Second World War. So this was the biggest war in history. And uh, after that, uh, the world was divided uh, uh, from the point of view of influence between uh, two centers of power, between the United States and Soviet Union. And uh, after two years, uh, we know that, uh, both of us know that 15th of August 19, uh, of 19, uh, 70, uh, uh, 47, it's an Independence Day of Republic of India. So these uh, two crucial dates are very important uh, uh, saying about um, some further history of our relationship because uh, uh, a new picture and new construction of world uh, practically appears on the scene. Uh, Oh, one second of the planet was divided and controlled by USSR. 
And uh, another part was controlled by the United States of America. And uh, these uh, two centers strive to involve uh, some allies uh, in uh, all other regions. But as we know that uh, South Asia, India uh, launched uh, so-called uh, uh, non-allied movement. So India uh, announced that it will not uh, uh, join any alliance and will uh, has its own policy in the region. But nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, uh, I suppose there, we can constant that uh, uh, after uh, some crucial visits in 1955 uh, of two leaders, Mr. Khrushchev and Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru uh, to Delhi and, uh, to, and uh, to Moscow, we have a positive and mutually beneficial, beneficial intergovernmental cooperation between two countries. So it means that uh, Russia, uh, sorry, Soviet Union, the predecessor of uh, modern Russia, started cooperating actively with India in South Asia. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, so the border, uh, we can uh, we can um, fix uh, uh, between India and Pakistan in the region. Uh, USSR was a partner, uh, and India was a partner of USSR uh, in South Asia, and uh, USA was uh, more oriented on Pakistan. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, the bipolar world uh, demands uh, to uh, practically to determine with whom you are in the region in this policy and uh, uh, USSR uh, started uh, supporting India in industrialization program in education and of course uh, it will result in some political endorsement uh, uh, Mr. Sergei already told about uh, this support, this endorsement in, the, in industrialization, about nuclear programs, about uh, space cooperation, about uh, construction of metallurgy plants, etc. And of course, uh, we invited a lot of uh, thousands of students to Russia, especially specialized in engineering programs, because uh, uh, in Russia, the education system in uh, engineering was one of the best, or for my mind, because uh, I worked for um, uh, international uh, companies and met a lot of engineers from Europe, from USA, from uh, Asia. Russian engineers, especially educated in uh, 60s, 50s, 70s of previous century, was educated in a best way, of course. That is why we invited a lot of students from India and uh, medical and engineering specialization was uh, the main direction in education cooperation. And besides that, uh, it, was, um, it was mutually beneficial and bilateral cooperation. Uh, from India, we uh, got some agro import, light industry import, and of course, political support in this uh, area. And um, you can see the structure of uh, export in uh, for USSR for USSR, and you can estimate the importance uh, of uh, relationship with Russia because in structure uh, of uh, our export and import, the percentage is uh, very high, and the tendency you see the tendency uh, is really rapidly growing and uh, in structure for export it's higher for ussr it's higher than for for example for usa 
And as for political support, I also would like uh, to put emphasize that uh, India felt uh, our endorsement uh, and practically made a choice in favor of Russia just to support uh, despite non-aligned movement uh, because uh, investments uh, to India was much higher in comparison with investment to China, for example. And uh, of course, uh, USSR supported India in uh, Indo-Pakistani conflicts sometimes. So uh, please flip the slide. But, but uh, uh, this uh, lovely era finished uh, in the beginning of uh, 19th of previous century. Uh, because it was a real friendship, real, uh, real political and uh, economical cooperation due to structure of export of import, due to some political steps, due to uh, growing, uh, uh, growing tendencies in cooperation. But suddenly this uh, situation frustrated. What was the reason? Oh, the reason is uh, uh, the reason was uh, a collapse of USSR. Uh, of course, uh, we will not uh, discuss about this point because I suppose uh, I suppose it will uh, take us uh, for one more uh, guest lecture uh, to understand what what was what was uh, the reason of this collapse. Of course, it was a tragedy for uh, former Soviet Union countries, but in uh, 1999, uh, USSR finished. And uh, what, uh, uh, what was the result of this event? Well, first of all, disappearance of one of the center of power and of bipolar world. So before all the countries all over the world, South America, uh, South, uh, South Eastern Asia, all Africa, all, all, all uh, regions were able uh, and uh, were necessary to uh, ma make a choice in what alliance or whom they will support uh, in this uh, uh, picture of uh, acting world. But now one center finished. So uh, the uh, result and the uh, next uh, step after that was uh, the hegemony of United States. So the only superpower appeared uh, on the scene, the only superpower. And uh, I suppose uh, every superpower doesn't mean United States, Soviet Union, India, China, all other countries. In case you are the only country uh, much stronger in political sphere, in economic sphere than others, you will uh, start run uh, the policy uh, uh, with uh, absolutely clear tendency to get to maximize you to maximize uh, all the margin from uh, uh, all your steps in policy and economics etc so uh, uh, the countries who were oriented on soviet union practically uh, lost uh, this base, like Soviet Union. No, no superpower whom to rely on, whom to try uh, and uh, whom to uh, cooperate. And there was a necessity uh, to follow uh, United States demand in the economy, try to, uh, try to, uh, adjust your policy with uh, United States uh, uh, intentions 
And uh, every superpower, and at that time, United States were uh, interested uh, mostly in uh, two uh, things. First of all, total political control, and uh, even more important thing, uh, to control uh, and to get uh, access to uh, oil and gas, water, metals, uh, disposals all over the world. So it's a policy of uh, getting uh, this access for further safety, for further security of your country, for total control for the future. Uh, this total dictate, of course, after some time, after some time, uh, resulted in some discontent of many countries, some regional centers, because uh, on the first stage, you usually get some benefits, you uh, get credits, uh, but after that, uh, more or less, but you are under management of uh, any superpower, and that time under United States, United States of America management. So uh, this discontent of many countries uh, due to disappearance of a system of check and balances. And uh, in further steps, uh, some infringements in political and economic interests uh, uh, practically started a new era of uh, some power centers in the world. Please flip the slide. Uh, so, uh, regional centers like uh, India, like China, like uh, reviving Russia, uh, maybe a little bit less European Union, but United European Union, uh, they felt that uh, they can face the risk of uh, loss some political and economic independence. Maybe not officially, but unofficially. And uh, some concrete uh, examples uh, showed uh, the reality of uh, such scenario. You can remember Yugoslavia, example, Iraq, Libya, uh, we are under some uh, pre, pre context of human rights. This country practically were occupied and destroyed. And uh, uh, I suppose uh, you remember that the reasons which were announced in the United Nations, uh, after that, uh, practically were forgotten, were forgotten that reasons were not realistic, were not realistic. It was just uh, a reason for invasion. And invasion was, uh, the reason for invasion was to destroy Yugoslavia, uh, to destroy, no, it means, it means that practically to destroy the base for uh, reviving Russia, uh, to trap all the Eastern Europe, uh, which were orientated in the past for Soviet Union, and to control this area. Uh, as for Iraq and Libya, we now mentioned this uh, intention to get a control under deposits of oil and gas. And uh, you see, uh, I suppose it's not a politological lecture, but uh, uh, a little bit different political structure of the country. It's not a reason for invasion. We can understand it clear that democracy, uh, of course, is a good uh, political structure, but nevertheless, the absence of democracy, it's not a reason uh, for invasion into any countries. Uh, and uh, some acquisition with uh, uh, maybe violence, violation of human rights uh, also should be not uh, specific for one countries and not uh, for another countries. You can, uh, 
uh, you can uh, say about violations in United States. Uh, uh, you can say about violations uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia and all the countries. And uh, I suppose uh, the situation is crystal clear. And practically, this total dictate of one superpower resulted in uh, uh, resulted in necessity for regional powers, not superpowers, but influential regional powers uh, to defend their own regional interests, to set up a new world configuration for China, for India, for South Africa, for some countries in South America, and for Russia, uh, the launch of uh, this new policy was uh, uh, President Vladimir Putin Munich speech in 2007, when uh, he announced that Russia will not follow the United States interests and will uh, defend their own interests in military way, in political way, in economic way. And uh, will form up uh, alliances uh, with uh, some supporters uh, in uh, all the regions. So the, the new era started. The one polar world, uh, step by ste step, uh, uh, became not so not so strong. But the trend was uh, that there was a preponderance of economic interests of uh, some political alliances, formation of new uh, alliances on a regional uh, and economic base, first of all, not political base, uh, not, of course, military base. But uh, uh, later drift, uh, uh, when uh, these economic alliances uh, became stronger, uh, practically uh, resulted in uh, s some um, uh, evolution into political and mi military uh, alliances. Please flip a slide, Dr. Satendra. Yes. Uh, and we faced a new reality situation when uh, after gap in relations and declining of uh, trade between India and Russia, uh, we uh, go ahead with revival of partnership in uh, the beginning of uh, 21st century, but on a new base, economic and regional interest base, not like a... Um, uh, elder brother policy, when uh, there were two superpowers and all other countries uh, uh, practically uh, to make a choice uh, between the United States and uh, uh, Soviet Union. Now, uh, there was a decision of two countries, okay, we will continue cooperation, or oh, both of us admit open competition. This cooperation should be not like we are political uh, uh, allies and uh, one country follows and other countries uh, without economic interest. First of all, some economic uh, benefits uh, on the scene. Uh, some uh, 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 no, practically it's an equal partnership between two countries. Uh, but despite these economic interests and clear, absolutely clear uh, economic competition, India and Russia declared a strategical partnership. Uh, and it is based on uh, three main points, military technical cooperation, space cooperation, and I forgot here, nuclear cooperation, uh, cooperation in uh, nuclear power sphere. Uh, military technical cooperation, uh, 
we can uh, constant that uh, more than 50 percent approximately between 50 and 60 percent of uh, military techniques military equipment and some spare parts are purchased from russia now so we can say about what mr sergey mentioned uh, we can say about uh, um, fifth generation uh, uh, jet fighters, uh, nuclear submarine, uh, uh, what else, uh, Kalashnikov plant uh, of rivals and, uh, uh, and other, more than 50%. And it's impossible uh, to change due to some political interests. Uh, this status quo can, cannot be changed within one, two, ten years. So this is a um, uh, ground point in our relationship. Space exploration. Of course, every superpower and both countries claim to be superpowers uh, so should have some interest in space exploration. Russia is number one now. Of course, uh, uh, as for state programs of United States, they uh, froze this uh, direction now. We know about uh, Mr. Musk's project and of course uh, with uh, some, uh, gr uh, some grateful position towards his exploration, but it's difficult to compete with uh, state programs. So to... Um, have some uh, real base to rely on uh, uh, rely on somebody in this program of course we uh, for india the best choice is uh, russia and uh, yeah we mentioned the kudan kulam uh, cooperation in uh, nuclear power station uh, yes uh, certain fourth uh, stage is underway and uh, fifth and sixth stage should be uh, completed in 2020 uh, fifth year, if I'm not mistaken. But I suppose uh, program uh, will be prolonged uh, with some uh, new stages. So uh, we have a real uh, ground in our relationship in this uh, most influential sphere for superpower now. And, but of course, we can base on this cooperation, but uh, it's necessary to go ahead to continue some real business, some private business, not only state business cooperation, and uh, some uh, to strengthen our political and economic cooperation in uh, some alliances. So, uh, our uh, we, we continue and we strengthen now cooperation in BRICS and Shanghai Cooperation Organization to combine effort, efforts, first of all, as a center of regional power. And the center, you, you know that uh, BRICS uh, unites uh, pr practically half of, uh, uh, of uh, a current world uh, in uh, number of population and uh, uh, like uh, most rapidly growing uh, in economy countries. Next slide, please. And uh, basing on this, of course, uh, we are going ahead with uh, uh, strengthening with uh, uh, some new direction in business cooperation. We should be uh, aware that uh, we have some controversies, of course, because we, we are equal partners and uh, it would be not uh, a right position only to say we are friends, everything is okay, we should go ahead, uh, I suppose, uh, just closing our eyes on the reality it's um, it's uh, a big risk big big risk to not to allow not not to pay enough attention some uh, problems some controversies which can destroy cooperation or uh, 
to make some damage to our cooperation. Of course, temporary disappearance after collapse of uh, after collapse of uh, uh, USSR. Uh, it was a loss of uh, common ground and uh, influence of European uh, uh, Union and uh, United States in some spheres in education in some uh, manufacturing. Uh, we can we can our uh, Russia and India, especially industry cooperation. Factor of China is also very important one, uh, especially after some tensions between India and China, uh, practically some months ago, because uh, some Indian politicians suspect that uh, Russia make can uh, choice uh, in favor of China, but Russia is trying uh, to keep neutrality in this. Uh, in such conflicts, of course. But points for governance, I suppose, much stronger for our two countries. We can constant them. The system of check and balances in the world, both countries are interested in. Growing economic regional interests for both countries. Uh, and uh, India and Russia understand it's impossible uh, to put stake only for on one country, for example, to follow, follow only for Russia, to follow only China, or for, uh, for India, to follow only for United States. We should, uh, we should uh, keep our growing uh, regional economic interests uh, by system of checks and balances. And uh, as I already mentioned, this close long-time cooperation in basic spheres, of course, uh, will support uh, growing uh, cooperation in uh, other types of business, uh, just uh, in directions of uh, creating infrastructure for basic businesses, etc., etc., etc. And uh, uh, of course, our uh, trade, uh, our trade, um, turnover is not uh, very high, but uh, you can see the tendency, you can see the tendency. And the tendency, uh, I make it uh, uh, especially uh, without COVID factor, just previous years, the tendency that uh, our uh, turnover is growing, maybe not so rapidly as desired, but nevertheless, but nevertheless. We have a program between two countries, we have spheres. And yesterday, as I mentioned, I, I had participated uh, in uh, Euro Asian uh, Commission conference. Plans uh, are fantastic how to speed up, how to widen our cooperation. Please, next slide. You can see the structure of export of and import. Uh, here, without percentage, it's possible to find. Uh, it's possible to find uh, in some uh, special websites uh, just to see what kind of uh, direction we have. Uh, from Russia, uh, the structure of experts. First of all, we are focused on minerals, machinery, and uh, technical equipment, especially in power spheres, uh, power. Uh, uh, chemical products, fertilizers, uh, it's a growing sphere, uh, precious metals and stones for cutting, uh, uh, cutting uh, diamonds uh, industry, agricultural machinery. Besides that, with agricultural machinery, we also see um, products of agricultural industry grows. Uh, in seeds in uh, sun oil, two times, two times half uh, within uh, 2020. Raw wood, power equipment, as I already mentioned, metal and metal products, agricultural products from Russia, from India, electrical engineering, chemical processing products, machinery and technical equipment, 
agricultural products we have, but uh, distance is uh, too long. Uh, of course, uh, after after launching Chennai Vladivostok uh, uh, road, I suppose uh, uh, Chennai Vladivostok Seaway, it would be uh, more potential to increase this agricultural uh, import from India. Textile and clothing, very prospective. Jewelry, uh, yes, pharma products, it's a top one. Uh, well, kitchen herbs and spice tea for restaurant, for uh, our product shops, uh, for our food shops, uh, uh, also very popular. Uh, I would like to put emphasis uh, on uh, some projects, what we have now uh, between uh, uh, companies, well-known projects, uh, not touching some military, space, nuclear, shipbuildings, uh, uh, see. Uh, Indian companies, state companies like ONGC uh, uh, has, uh, has some share in our Sakhalin uh, and some more oil and gas projects in Russia. And I suppose we will continue this cooperation and widen it uh, for sure, because a lot of deposits are <coughs> situated in Russia. Uh, Russian oil and gas companies are interested in coming to Indian market like Sibur, cooperation with Reliance Industries, because uh, uh, on a Western uh, uh, beach of uh, uh, India, uh, there are some biggest uh, refinery plants, uh, refinery plants, and uh, their production is a feedstock for petrochemical industry. India uh, India demands such uh, petrochemical technology, and uh, we can deliver these technologies for Reliance, for NGC, for Gale, for all these companies. Uh, and uh, Indian uh, uh, oil and gas companies are interested in working uh, uh, on Russian deposits of oil and gas. India demands some. Uh, oil and gas service companies uh, for exploration, uh, for drilling, uh, and Russia has a good expertise in this sphere. Uh, also, as for not saying only oil and gas, uh, uh, we have a company, Flex, which uh, now launch, uh, launches a plant in Russia for product some plastics. And besides that, uh, very prospective sphere opening pharma plants in Russia, because uh, uh, India Indian uh, product Indian products will be very competitive in price and quality. Well, so a lot of spheres. I will not uh, put attention to all of these uh, points. Uh, uh, but uh, oil, gas, uh, oil, gas service, uh, pharma, uh, uh, power equipment, uh, cutting diamonds uh, localization on Russia territory, everything is very prospective. So please, new slides. Next slide. And uh, I suppose, uh, I suppose we can, uh, some, uh, yesterday I asked uh, organizers uh, state level uh, about some spheres which we do not pay enough attention, but they are very prospective. I know, for example, to promote them from Russia territory to India, because we have a good expertise in water supply and water treatment. And I know this is a state program in India with um, divided financing between state and uh, government, every state uh, and government, and very prospective to come and start this type of business. Solid waste disposal. We have uh, good experience and long time expertise. Uh, smart digital technologies. I suppose it's uh, mutually beneficial. 
in Russia, there are a lot of companies specialized uh, in such technologies for military uh, uh, supply, for police supply, and uh, besides that, for smart cities. Primary and secondary and higher education. Uh, I suppose our example on the scene. And besides that, we know a great, great demand in India uh, also for uh, such uh, programs. Uh, we are ready to start, we are ready to attract students uh, in engineering, in management, and we are interested to send our students for our international projects. We discussed it with Reliance and Reliance was ready to finance such projects because we need uh, some workforce. We need, uh, we need qualified management for our growing projects with ONGC, with Reliance, uh, with um, SR and uh, such huge companies. So uh, this exchange of students would be very prospective and important to have uh, one language for cooperation. Fitness industry, uh, no, this is what we, we can uh, export from Russia. Uh, usually the share of uh, uh, fitness industry in gross domestic product is about three, four uh, percent usually. In India, 0.1 percent. So we can export this, uh, we can export this uh, industry. Uh, for Russia, I am trying to orient my partners, my colleagues, that India is very qualified in IT technology, cooperation with Bangalore, uh, fantastically qualified management in oil and gas sphere. We should uh, strengthen this cooperation. But accounting, India is one of the strongest country in this sphere call centers for international companies, for sure. And uh, some more, but we should, we should uh, infiltrate in each other in the, uh, to uh, strengthen, to increase cooperation. Please, next slide. And uh, at the end of my speech, um, uh, of course, I suppose uh, our today's step, uh, uh, thank you for invitation of you of uh, uh, Dr. Sergei Fandeev. Uh, we should start and um, uh, our uh, university is interested in joint programs with business specialization. And we should uh, uh, share with our programs with some business company, with our both countries projects in oil and gas sphere. Uh, now I contacted with uh, Novolipetsk metallurgy uh, plant, which is going to launch uh, a metallurgy plant in India. Uh, also has demands for qualified workforce. So to launch joint programs uh, oriented on this project, on this uh, uh, bilateral project just uh, programs for in me uh, medical sphere, in engineering sphere, student exchange between two universities, invitation uh, of lectors just to launch the uh, project. And uh, from our end, we are ready to start programs for Indian students because we are interested in this cooperation. Thank you very, very much, colleagues. Uh, I can continue, but I suppose uh, for first, uh, for first acquaintance, it's enough. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for such a great presentation and a comprehensive explanation about the strategic, economical, political relationship between India and Russia. We surely have many great takeaways from this session. And now we are open for Q&A. So if any of you have any doubts, you can either type in the chat or you can unmute and ask. Uh, 
uh, dear students, don't hesitate, dear professors yes. as well. Actually, ask, so your session ask, was ask like your you presentation in. was so comprehensive, and we got so much information. That's why I think there are <laughs> no questions because it was so like so interesting also, and we got a lot to know about from that presentation. Uh, probably, yeah. Uh, some of the faculty, if uh, would like to ask the question, uh, I will have actually the few questions if you allow to do that. Uh, uh, one is like uh, you. Uh, like petrochemical and metal, I think it has been pretty long uh, uh, history for the Indo-Russian uh, cooperation is concerned. But uh, in the recent, like in the years about the pharma sectors, when you mentioned uh, uh, rightly about the potential trend about the pharma. So what are the uh, further in the pharma sector, whether uh, it is a kind of, you know, the uh, biomedical research or you want to mention about like you know the medical tourism or maybe or you want to have a uh, like healthcare as industry development which uh, specific part of the pharma sector which you uh, think like it is more potential to hmm. proceed in that direction uh, dr satandra thank you thank you for uh, the question uh, Yesterday, we discussed it very thoroughly how to cooperate because the chairman of uh, Russian Pharmaceutical Alliance uh, took part uh, in the meeting. And uh, what we are interested in, uh, Indian uh, pharmaceutical industry uh, is specialized in production of some uh, tablets, uh, some cures for etc. etc. But as for feedstock, which uh, it uh, takes for further production, usually is uh, exported from other countries. And Russia can provide some feedstock for this uh, production. But Indian uh, technology is one of the best of the world. How to product, uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, to start. So we are interested in starting production on our territory to get some imported plants because you have technology, you have uh, good brands uh, of uh, some cures and besides that uh, very competitive in uh, quality and uh, uh, price so we can provide just to resume we can provide with some feedstock for your production uh, now uh, to india uh, but our interest uh, for some localization of uh, indian industry on the territory of russia in such case, it would be possible to provide feedstock to India and uh, for better logistics to make it on the territory of Russia. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, this helps uh, also to uh, us to understand, like, you know, how the industry can be uh, more uh, like, you know, the even for the young uh, people, how they can be uh, opportunist, uh, opportunity coming in the pharma sector uh, bilaterally actually probably yeah and uh, and uh, we have one more question it is from neela kantan sir so it's a two part question first part is what about nuclear safeguards russia is taking especially after the chernobyl disaster and the second part is in the context of kundan kulam project what are the improvements uh, sorry what is uh, uh, the last point kundan kulam uh, in the context of Kundan Kulam project, what are the improvements? Improvements. Chernobyl. Они спросили, какие были проблемы с Чернобылем, а как там сейчас с Кудам Куламе, какие improvements там? Я я я понял. Я просто пытаюсь понять, какие улучшения в Кудан Куламе там могут. Вроде там плохого ничего не было последнее время. У нас новые самые последние технологии. Вы скажите, что везде в Штатах, во Франции. Ну. No. Okay, colleagues, so I will answer, I will answer for this question uh, because you know, uh, atomic energy, this is the most, most um, cheaper energy, uh, only sun energy 
cheaper than uh, atomic energy. That's why in all countries all over the world, USA, France, uh, Germany, and um, China, and now in India, uh, everybody is trying to use uh, atomic nuclear power energy. But yeah, of course, Chernobyl was a catastrophe, was disaster. But now, you know, it was about 40, about 30, 35 years ago, gone, years gone. <clears throat> And now new technologies, new, new technologies, permit to provide security, more security in this case than before, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think it's most uh, safety, safety uh, power uh, production uh, field. That's why I'm telling you, the Kudam Kulam, this is a, last last technology uh, product that's why so don't be afraid like chernobyl no very okay, thank you very very important moment as for uh, our state corporation rosatom this is the only nuclear corporation which has a full a full uh, cycle of activity. So it does not uh, hire some providers of any services. Uh, it controls all the stages, uh, starting from research and uh, finishing by completion of nuclear station and its exploitation. So uh, it's... Uh, totally controlled uh, and uh, uh, yes as mr sergey mentioned uh, the control is growing and uh, uh, improving uh, every year okay thank you thank you very much thank you sir so now i would call satendra sir to give the oh, we have one more question okay how does American sanctions affect nuclear tech export? Nuclear what? Sorry. Nuclear tech exports. Russian. Yes, Russia. We are independent in this field. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, tell uh, Mr. Professor Evgeny Griva, tell we are independent. Russia are independent uh, in this field because, you know, we are producing our. Uh, ourselves uh, all equipment or machinery for atomic station uh, see usually yes just to continue uh, it affects only spheres where we have some feedstock some spare parts from other countries which can uh, impose these sanctions but yes here as i mentioned we have a full cycle of uh, uh, providing of production, uh, which is managed uh, by Rosatom itself. Okay, so yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. We have one more question. Can you tell us about the Russian cryptocurrency? Can you repeat? Because you put your microphone uh, down and uh, I lost uh, some words at the end. Okay, sorry, sorry. More loud, more loud, please. Can you tell us more about the Russian cryptocurrency? Russian cryptocurrency. <laughs> I can only say that this sphere is very popular among uh, youngers. <laughs> uh, I suppose the same, same situation like uh, in India, we have a lot of uh, well qualified people in uh, uh, IT sphere and uh, a lot of uh, people who are interested in cooperation because some of my friends ask me to put them through with uh, some Indian IT guys. Uh, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not very particular about this sphere. It's a pity. Uh, one more question, last probably. Uh, I'd like to ask, uh, how do you see the cooperation in the startup and innovation sector? Uh, because this is something emerging in India. And how do you see like where the Indo and Russia can uh, collaborate on the startup and innovation aspects? In what sphere? Uh, startup and innovation. In all innovation sphere, you know, any industry, any industry, it can be any industry. Yeah, any 
any really? investor, any, doctor, yeah. Doctor, doctor Sutender, uh, I will start to answer you to you, and uh, Doctor Griva will help me after. You know, uh, I think, uh, on my opinion, Indian brains are the best brains uh, all over the world. You know, all IT engineers all over the world, they are Russians and Indians, really. You know, that's why I'm thinking uh, Bangalore, Bangalore Technologies um, uh, Parks must uh, cooperate with Russians. And we will be the first uh, force all over the world, before, uh, beyond China even. Because, you know, now China is very strong in this field as well. But uh, India and Russia has to work together in this field, especially with Bangalore um, enterprises. Bangalore is a very famous uh, place in India and all over the world about IT technology, for example. Uh, about another innovations, I think uh, Mr. Griva will add me what, uh, in, in what field we can uh, cooperate in innovations. Yeah, it's a very overwhelming <laughs> question. Yeah, uh, I suppose, yes, what can uh, combine us? Uh, first of all, for example, in comparison with China, because China is also our partner, but uh, uh, India is uh, there are much more, much more uh, businessmen in their minds in India. It's not a military economy, just when there is a super boss, supervisor who, sh who shows the way and control all your stage. I, I suppose it's possible to mobilize people to make a breakthrough, but after they can reach some uh, border, but not to um, to increase the success, to develop uh, uh, after the breakthrough. After that, we need a businessman uh, brains. So this can combine us, uh, both Russia and India are very flexible. I suppose one of our uh, advantage, competitive advantage, what uh, like uh, Mr. Uh, Sergei told, uh, we are very close in cross-cultural uh, uh, in, in cross sphere. We are flexible. We are good in engineering, IT. We are looking for new ways, not only go ahead uh, in uh, determined way. So we can cooperate in all spheres because uh, we are very creative. And especially, I think, in biotechnological sphere, biotechnological and um, medical spheres as well, you know. Now we are cooperating with Indian uh, partner, partners in vaccine, uh, COVID-19, you know. Uh, so we can uh, cooperate in this innovation field as well, you know. But, uh, you know, robotization, for example, now there is robot big robotization. It will be, this is the future of uh, uh, industry, you know, all, all of all industries all over the world. And we can cooperate as well. Uh, I'm telling you true truth. Uh, Indian people has very good brains. Because, you know, for example, we have club, club chess club here in our uh, cultural center in Pedro. I saw, I saw many, many small child uh, children, Indian children, who are very clever in chess. Very clever, you know. You know, uh, your uh, champion of chess, uh, Indian ch ch champion chess. Very nice guy, you know. And he was starting to, and he was starting to play chess in our cultural center in Chennai, Madras, before Madras, you know. He, he came five years old, small child like this, after he became the champion of all over the world. So I would like to tell you, <clears throat> many fields of innovation, we have to cooperate with you, especially with you. <clears throat> because, you know, uh, somebody to asked me about these atomic um, uh, problems, you know. <clears throat> the first atomic station was constructed, by, uh, was constructed in India by USA, this General Electrical, 1969. But after uh, USA 
made sanction against China. They didn't give them uh, some things, you know. This atomic station stopped and only Soviet Union came and helped the uh, Indian people to restart this atomic station, you know, with um, Russian help. So <coughs> I will tell you really, we have many, many fields of uh, cooperation in innovation uh, sphere, many. Thank you. So now I would like to invite you only to give the vote of thanks. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Karsha, uh, for comparing uh, this one uh, session. So it's my privilege uh, and honor to uh, give the vote of thanks uh, uh, today uh, for this guest lecture. So first, uh, on, um, on behalf of Somaya Vidya Vihar University, would like to extend our sincere thanks and also on behalf of the uh, Vice Chancellor uh, uh, Pivira Sakran Pillai, sir, and also our Chancellor uh, Sri Sameer Somaya, on behalf of him, would like to extend their greetings to you both about that. And uh, uh, I would like to recall a few things which you mentioned uh, about, uh, uh, like uh, Indo-Russian uh, collaboration is concerned for the long time. It is, uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of collaboration as uh, has been a historical actually so uh, if you look into that indo-russian is concerned and especially if you look into that steel industry development in, in india and that i think the credit goes to indo-russian collaboration is concerned because i know the bhilai steel plant very closely my lawyers are there and we know uh, many of the those people like the steel plant they do this speak russian that's a uh, Another beauty of that, you know, the collaboration is concerned. And myself, when I was studying as a foreign student in China, I had my first roommate, actually the Russian, for one year. So that was a fantastic, you know, I have a couple of very good friends about that. So few words, I just, uh, I don't remember, many things I've forgotten, but Oshi in Korosho or something like that, you know. <laughs> I remember the word which often they have been saying that. Uh, and Dr. Shadi, you mentioned about that, you know, a lot of similarity between uh, uh, the even the words uh, between uh, Sanskrit and the uh, uh, Russian, like, you know, uh, you rightly mentioned about the Shweta, Swet, you know, the white Swet and Swetlana, which is very, very common name in the both country and meaning is white. Uh, I remember one, my friend was name was also Agne and Swetlana, so I'm have the close memory about that and uh, another you mentioned about the kama river uh, which is uh, people living around with that the moksha so that's very very we, i didn't know that and probably i think we need to do this kind of research and bring in the, in terms of the uh, documentation and so young people they can be more uh, learn and share about that that would be fantastic and uh, you also mentioned about uh, uh, the various initiative happens between Indo and Russia from the like Bangalore and the, your science center. When you talk about that, I'm sure some of the students will like to explore to visit the science center uh, in Mumbai, in Pedro Road. I think that's a fantastic place. I've been there. And another, I think the Indo-Russian collaboration, which you mentioned about the space, you know, like a first Indian astronaut, Rakesh Sharma, which has the very, very... Uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, touchy moment for every Indian collaboration is concerned with the Russia. I think India and Russia is not only the like uh, uh, political or maybe a strategic ally. It has been a very strong friendship is concerned. And the best thing India, Indo-Russia has the trust between two countries. Uh, there is no doubt at all, even whatever the political uh, things are there. But trust is very, very strong factor which India, Russia has together about that. Even in the vaccine, as you mentioned, Dr. Shadji, like, you know, Sputnik and all those is getting uh, collaborated with that India. And uh, yes, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Griva, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, a lot of your own experience of uh, like being in India about that. And you introduced uh, rightly about that, what are the areas we can uh, the both country can look into that because uh, especially like, you know, the military and technical, all this alliance was traditional. Also, you have set the new trend of that alliance when you talk about, you know, the uh, 
the like you know the various aspect like export import where you mentioned about the pharma uh, sector which is prominating and agro sector also textile minerals chemical product and uh, lastly also you mentioned uh, the dr sajid the biotechnological aspect about that that was a very good uh, i think the message to all of the student because these students are going to be in career in the corporate which they may be able to uh, uh, give certain uh, you know the interest and focus on this kind of areas about that also you mentioned about the joint ventures and uh, the new area which you mentioned i think probably the mumbai can be very uh, uh, interesting uh, partner for the russian and maybe moscow itself like you mentioned about the solid waste management uh, which is the mumbai has the very huge uh, challenge about that you know the water treatment uh, talk about also uh, the account uh, accountancy I mean, it's like finance sector which you highlighted i think this will be very very uh, interesting for us uh, as uh, to in today's lecture many of the finance students are there and dr trivedi is uh, sir is also there and uh, we have one of the very strongest department in uh, kj suman student management in finance finance and market is two of our strongest departments are there so hope uh, the area which you have highlighted probably we will be able to contribute and few things also i would like to mention uh, somaya vidya vihar university also has been somewhere uh, in collaborative research project uh, somaya vidya vihar has agriculture research institute also and where we have the one uh, collaborative project with the russian space research center somewhere i think if i'm not wrong there is a remote sensing projects are there with the uh, somaya vidya vihar uh, the agriculture research institute so definitely i think we will be interested to more uh, look into the such kind of collaboration and even i i think there are in russia the brics funds are also available uh, where probably we can look into that uh, the bilateral you know the kind of collaborative uh, uh, research project which addresses the brics areas we will be happy to and interest with that and uh, uh, with this uh, i would like to also thanks to the our, our own director dr monica ma'am i think uh, she has to leave uh, for the her lecture so she left uh, just a uh, while ago and uh, thank you uh, to dr monica ma'am for your leadership and motivation to organize this kind of session and uh, also uh, the faculty who has uh, uh, from their busy schedule they have uh, joined uh, the today's lecture and uh, neil kantan sir very much uh, thank you to all and asking the uh, some relevant question about that and uh, last but not least you know the uh, very sincere thanks to all the students being the present uh, in today's audience and our pr team and it team uh, you have been very great support to uh, uh organize this uh, today's lecture flawless uh, is those stream uh, uh, all the uh, support back and support for the student and pr team thank you very much and i hope uh, with this uh, there will be uh, more and more partnership and uh, bilateral uh, relationship will be strengthening in the coming times in coming years uh, not only by those who are in the business field also those who are going to be in the business field especially the young people i think uh, uh, you know the like mba students or young graduate i think this is somewhere we will look into that where the financial university which is highly reputed joining hands with us and we do some kind of collaborative program as you mentioned the student exchange and faculty exchange program uh, i think we will be happy to explore those areas and hope uh, uh, everybody has enjoyed uh, the session today and hope you guys also uh, you both uh, uh, eminent expert on the relationship uh, you have uh, like uh, time is spent uh, the time which you have spent with us and hope uh, we will be working more closely together in the coming future thank you so much thank you everyone dr satyendra one one a few words we have one minute please Sure, sure, sure. Thank please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Satyendra. Thank you very much to all, uh, especially all students. You know, India is very prospective country. Why? 
because more than half of her, of its population less than 30 years old you know about approximately 27 years old half of population of, of india very young country so you will be uh, our my dear students you will be managers you will be rulers you will be you will rule your country you know and i wish you really uh, to be very 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 clever and to be very very proud of your country you know a very very proud uh, of our friendship with russia russia and india we uh, russia was what russia is and russia will be forever a uh, friend of india real really because you know when you will come for example one time in moscow in russia and when uh, russian people will ask you what country are you from you will tell i'm from india they will tell you, ah, Raj Kapoor. <laughs> yeah. Same like this for them, India, it's Raj Kapoor. Everybody knows Raj Kapoor. Everybody knows Mahatma Gandhi. Everybody knows, many people knows uh, all uh, your culture, you know, your songs. And uh, really, we like your country, your culture. So uh, I wish you to be good in uh, managers uh, of your country, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think it's not last. This first, but not last our meeting. Yes. So we Thank hope uh, we will be having a few more much. sessions like in the... Yes, please, Evgrya. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Satendra Kumar. Thank you very much to Dr. Uh, Sergei Fandiev, all uh, colleagues. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to meet and uh, yes, absolutely sure that we will go ahead and we will explore some spheres where we will be successful in cooperation and we will start our cooperation let's let's continue with um, uh, work some work and meeting next year how to do it uh, how to do first step in what spheres i suppose under support of uh, russian culture center we will reach uh, glittering results thank you very much thank you thank you trivedi sir are you there trivedi sir okay uh, thank you thank you very much i th i think definitely we'll look forward uh, for uh, our meeting in next year and wish you a very happy new year uh, in advance and also merry christmas to all of you and yeah trivedi sir are you there you just i think okay uh, and we look forward uh, hopefully probably in the coming times uh, we will be able to take our students uh, to the russia uh, for a visit and also we'll be happy to welcome your student back to our in our campus in mumbai and between financial city and the financial university thank you very much thank you bye bye thank you very much bye thank you namaste namaste thank you very much evgeny пока до встречи спасибо тебе большое thank you very much спасибо сергей давай я наберу тебя сейчас на секунду okay bye bye mr satender bye Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Pankaj, Mr. Dr. Pankaj, yes. yes. <laughs> He's, okay, I, I would like to hear you next time. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, yes, uh, next time we'll have the meeting. Okay, thank you, bye. 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 Thank you.